Hi, uh, it's Editing Jay in person. <laughs> I just wanted to pop in here as a quick intro to the video you're about to watch. Last month, uh, my, my new internet friend and I, Camilla, at Hasty Ye Books, uh, met for the first time <laughs> to uh, do a butter read collaboration. Basically, we picked each other's TBRs. It was a delightful experience. I had a great time with it. But what you didn't see was like the absolute anguish and indecision that I also went through um, in anticipation for us meeting for the first time. It was 11 p.m. the night before and I did not know what book I was going to recommend her and I was very self-conscious about my own taste in books. So basically at 11 p.m. that night I turned on the camera and I thought I was just going to deliver some fun chaotic energy but in the process of me like trying to narrow down my book recommendations I just ended up like doing a lot of reviews like a lot of in-depth reviews and I stand by some of the books that I mentioned and I just thought that'd be a fun video for uh, at the very least for Camilla to see <laughs> the behind the scenes indecision that I went through uh, trying to pick these recommendations for her. So that's the intro to this video. Let us just, let's just do the thing. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay. What's up? How's it going? How are you? There, there's a lot of chaotic energy happening in here uh, because it's 11 p.m. And um, also, I didn't really like plan what I was going to say before I say it. So that's going to be fun for me. For context, um, I am doing a buddy read collaboration with my good internet friend Camilla. Okay, so <laughs> the, the, the premise of this collab is that Camilla and I were going to meet tomorrow and we're going to basically recommend a book to the other person that we think that they would like. I'm very nervous. Uh, I'm nervous because this kind of feels like my one and only chance of impress Camilla and I don't know what book I'm gonna pick for her. I had some thoughts. The, the thing is that there's a lot writing on this book recommendation because if she doesn't like it, uh, I don't think that bodes well for our internet friendship. And um, let's just say Camilla has better taste than me. <laughs> let's put it this way. The books that Camilla reads are kind of like Alexander Hamilton uh, building palaces out of paragraphs. And the books I read are divergent. <laughs> In my like life outside of booktube, I my tastes are more than just like shitty YA dystopian from the 2010s. But right now I haven't been reading a lot outside of that and I'm very nervous about what I'm gonna recommend her. Like I want the book I picked to like represent like my personality and the kind of books I like but I also want her to like it and I'm worried that those two things are not gonna I'm worried that I'm not gonna find that like Venn diagram overlap between those two things. I've been talking for a while uh let's just here are my ideas okay so hold on let me that's a great frame isn't it <laughs> okay I'm just gonna start pulling down books I'm just gonna start pulling down books that I feel like I can make a case for. I'm just trying to pick books that are like not the the shady like 2010s YA that I'm normally reading. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. This, this is the first half. We're gonna go off camera. Hold on. I'm gonna stand by. I'm still here. I'm just at my bookshelf. <laughs> I was really nervous when I turned on the camera because I thought this would be me um, agonizing and stressing over the fact that I have terrible taste in books and she's not gonna like what I pick for her. But I think we have some strong contenders. I'm just gonna go through all of them. Some of them are, are not gonna go through to the second round, but I just, I felt like they were worthy of like at least showing because they are the most adult book I've read um, in the past several years. So yeah, so we're just going to talk about them and I'm going to talk about like why I want to or don't want to recommend them to Camilla. Okay, let's start first with this pile. I'm fine. Uh, hold on. Let me just like arrange them really quickly. Okay, this one is One More Thing by B.J. Novak. This is one of my favorite books. I'm not gonna recommend it to Camilla. It's just kind of like too trendy, but also like outdated because like this came out on like, I'm gonna guess 20... I was, I didn't catch your college yet. So I'm gonna say 2016, I'm gonna say it got published in 2016. 
2014? Oh, I guess it was published in 2014. Okay. Yeah, like, this book is, like, trendy when it came out. It is outdated, but I, I just, I freaking love it. I just think that VJ Novak is a really talented writer. If I could describe the, the vibe of it, I would say like snippets from everyday life, but just like a little quirkier. And there are some short stories in here that I just like go back to again and again. Um, my personal favorite is Sophia. I don't know, I just really like it. It's a little too personal for me to recommend to Camilla, so I'm not going to, but um, if you like trendy books and you like BJ Novak, go for it. <laughs> okay, so this one's called, um, The Family Fang by Kevin Wilson. Okay, so Kevin Wilson had a moment on booktube because he also wrote another book called uh, Nothing to See Here. Okay, so Kevin Wilson wrote this book. He loves to, like, like, write a book that's, like, completely set in the real world, but then he just throws something weird at you. I found this book, I used to work in like an artist studio, and like there would be this like kind of like giveaway section where like people would just like leave their crap out that they didn't want, and because they were all artists it was like really cool crap. <laughs> Yeah, like there would be furniture, bits of art projects that didn't work out, so it was all very quirky fun trash. And then one day, one of those pieces of trash was this book. Okay, so the premise of this book is that the main characters are a family called the Fangs, and they are a family of, they would call themselves like performance artists. But what they really do is just cause chaos. Like their idea of art is that they go into like a public space, like a mall, and they just like cause chaos. They just cause something weird to happen. It's almost like a prank, but they consider it art. This like environment of always causing chaos is what um, the two children, Buster and Annie, have grown up in. And this experience of being part of this chaotic like sort of performance art and being a part of their parents like eccentric world is what shapes them, like Loki psychologically damages them and kind of informs like their reactions like in adulthood. And that is the backstory for this book. I really like this book. I don't know, like there was just something about it that I really liked. It was just unlike anything I was reading. It was just a little weirder than all the things I was reading. And as like a fellow like aspiring artists I kind of related to like their struggles and their pain. I can't recommend this to- <laughs> I feel like it's a little too weird to recommend to Camilla, um, because there's just like, there's like a little incest. <laughs> like the tiniest bit, the tiniest bit. But other than that, I really enjoy this book. <laughs> but other than that, I really like the book. I just don't know if she'd like it. I don't know, maybe I should go safe. Like, I don't know Camilla that well. So the next one is, um, uh, all of our wrong todays. I'm not gonna recommend this to her. It's not that good. <laughs> it's a really interesting like concept. Tom Barron lives in the 2016 that the people in the 1950s imagined we would have. A version of our world where technology has solved all of humanity's problems. Yet Tom can't seem to find his place in this perfect utopia and feels like a constant disappointment to his beautiful but distant father. Tom Barron lives in the 2016 that the people in the 1950s imagined we would have. Yet Tom can't seem to find his place in this perfect utopia and feels like a constant disappointment to his- Ah! There we go. His brilliant but distant. <laughs> the word Pasche was looking for was brilliant. Not that fathers can't be beautiful, but <laughs> I'm sure you know what I mean, but I'm glad we cleared that up. When the girl of his dreams turns his life upside down, Tom does what you do when you're heartbroken and have a time machine. Something stupid. He finds himself stranded in what seems to him to be a terrible dystopian alternate reality, what we immediately recognize as our 2016, the all too familiar real world. So yeah, so that's the premise. The main character Tom lives in the perfect future that we were supposed to have, where climate change has been fixed, uh, we are all on renewable energy and life is amazing. We love it here. And in this world that's just so much more far along than we are, the top scientists are about to um, launch their first fucking time machine. They're about to fucking travel back in time. And Tom, our little ding dong over here, Tom, <laughs> accidentally goes back in time and messes everything up. And when he 
returns to his present, he ends up in our present. He ends up in our 2016. It was a really cool premise. I, I read this when I was an intern uh, for a TV development um, office. And like my job as an intern was to like read like scripts or books that could potentially be adapted um, and just give notes on them. And I asked for this book. I don't remember how I found this, but like I remember when I did, I asked my boss if I could read it. And I was so hopeful about it, but there was just some things that fell flat. Like, for example, it focused a lot on like Tom's like love story with this girl like he's always had a crush on who was like out of his league in his real in his world, but in our world was like more approachable. And I just didn't like that. I felt <laughs> I just felt like she was cooler than him and I wish that she had realized that. <laughs> so that was like my take. So I'm not gonna recommend this to Camilla, but like I think if you can, I think that it is still an interesting premise and I like how I found it. We're gonna put this behind us because we're not gonna, it's, it's out. It doesn't pass the first round. Okay, this one, I'm not gonna recommend this to her. I, I love the disaster artist. I love it so much, but I, Camilla's not gonna like it. She's not gonna care about it. The disaster artist is a memoir about the making of a movie called La Room, which is widely known as the worst movie ever made. The Room is a wild ride. Like the the Room, the movie is quite the trip and the person who made it is a trip and a half. It's like The Room is such a classic in the film school world. I fucking like, I love The Room so much. Like it's so much fun to watch with friends. And like reading about like the tea <laughs> behind the making of The Room is just so interesting because there are just so many like odd choices in it that you're like, who made this call? It's just so good. But it's only good if you like watch The Room and you want to know how it was made. Like it's only good if you cared about the source material, you know what I mean? So I love you so much uh, in one day. Uh, but fun fact, my boss um, from my internship got me this as like a, a going away present uh, after my internship ended. That was so sweet of him. He didn't have to do that. I mean, he probably put it on the company card, but that was still thoughtful. Like I talked about The Room constantly. <laughs> You know, it's like an example of like seeing like someone's interest and like, you know, like giving them a gift like tailored to their interest. Like I think that's really sweet. <laughs> Diary of a Teenage Girl. Okay, so Diary of a Teenage Girl is a really interesting book. Um, but I'm not gonna recommend it to Camilla. It's just like it's kind of like a little too um okay, it's it's a <laughs> It's about a teenage girl who has like her sexual awakening uh, when she starts sleeping with her mother's boyfriend. <laughs> and so you can you can see why we're not recommending it to Camilla. But like personally, I found I thought that this was a really interesting book and I think it honors the girl, um, the main character really well. And I, I really recommend it, but I am not gonna recommend it to Camilla. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe you should talk to someone is up next. I do love this book. I would recommend this in general. I'm not going to recommend it to Camilla though. It's it's a really good book. It's a memoir about a therapist who uh, details her experiences with some of her um, clients and also her experiences with her own therapist. This is a book that's actually helped me a lot through my own quarter life crisis and I really like it but I don't know if it's like good buddy read material. So up next we have An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is the second book. I don't have a physical copy of the first book. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't know how booktube as a whole feels about John and Hank Green. I get the sense that they're memed a lot, especially John Green, but I personally am a John and Hank Green fan. I don't know, like my quarter life crisis has like for whatever reason taken me to John and Hank Green. I just, I find them so comforting. And like, I know that John Green has a pretentious writing style and I know he gets made fun of it for it, but uh, I'm so embarrassed to say all that out loud. But anyway, this book was written by his younger brother, Hank. Um, and I really, I personally really like it. I personally feel like the book like encapsulates like my personality at this moment in time. And I would love to share that with Camilla, but I, because it's a little too personal, like I really didn't want to risk it. So let's talk about an absolutely remarkable thing. Okay, so I can see a world where like someone watching this 
just like didn't read it because like they've kind of memefied a uh, John and Hank read in their minds. So this this book synopsis is for those people. <laughs> An absolutely remarkable thing is about a 23 year old you know post grad young woman who one night by complete like happenstance comes across what she thinks is a very impressive transformer esque type sculpture like it's big it's impressive and she feel, feels compelled to kind of like record a video of her joking about like this like really cool amazing thing that she found while just walking through um the streets of new york city late at night and then in a move that she couldn't predict this video goes absolutely viral what she didn't know was that there's a really interesting mystery behind this statue and Rachel essentially broke the story and because of this she is just absolutely catapulted to fame and it completely changes her life. Um, okay what was the statue? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna spoil it I'm gonna include a timestamp so you can skip this part if you don't want to hear it. Um, part of me kind of encourages you to because like I feel like it's one of those things that kind of makes or breaks whether or not you want to read this book. Okay ready set go. What was the statue? Um, it was an alien. It was, it was an alien. Uh, April found an alien. Um, and I mean like, like saying Transformers, the movie, like they were like robot aliens. This is kind of what the statue is. So uh, yeah, so uh, the fact that she discovered this first was uh, kind of a big deal. Here's the thing, I, I highly recommend this book. You just have to accept that the that the science fiction part of it is really fiction. Like, you just have to accept that, like, the science doesn't really work. Like, you just have to accept that. But personally, I don't know. I really like it. I think it's a comfort read. When the book begins, the character April really, like, is essentially the person I was when I was 23. Like, the part where she, like, catapults into fame and fortune, like, unrelatable. Um, but those first few chapters, like, I see me very strongly in those pages. So that's part of why, like, I kind of want to recommend this book to Camilla. Again, it might be too personal. It might hurt my feelings if she doesn't like it. <laughs> We'll think about it, we'll sleep on it, but I don't know. But I think it would be an interesting book to like make her read and like talk about with her. Here's one that I think is a real contender. I think I'm going to recommend this to her. I don't know if she's going to like it because I don't know if she likes zombie apocalypse stories. Uh, we will comb through her Goodreads again to like do a final round and I'll let you know what I choose tomorrow. Okay, this one is called Dead Man Walking. I read this a few years ago. It's basically, it's another zombie apocalypse story. But like the zombie apocalypse aspect of it is like really just like background noise. Like the premise is that like in the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse where society has kind of rebuilt itself enough to hold elections, it falls like two like bloggers who have been chosen to accompany a presidential candidate on his um, campaign and they get to like report on it. The context is like um, during the zombie apocalypse like kind of like traditional newspapers and news outlets weren't covering the apocalypse like fully and to its true extent so independent like online bloggers became kind of like the reliable like news source for a lot of people and now these two bloggers have risen to enough prominence that they get to follow a legitimate presidential candidate and it's a really interesting premise and I really I think that I think that if Camilla is down with zombies she's gonna like it um these are the physical books that I have to recommend to Camilla future day might have more books <laughs> to recommend to you but yes those are my recommendations that I would give to you or Camilla. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that editing Jay like can cut something great together. But yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I'm gonna go turn this off uh, before it runs out of battery. <laughs> Hello, Editing Jay here just to round things out for us. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you Camilla for being uh, the best. <laughs> person to do a buddy read with. I was delighted. I had the best time here. Like, I don't know if you watched the video where I like picked out my TBR for her, but um, some of the books I ended up recommending like were not even mentioned in this video. And that's because I was, I was thinking of recommendations up until the moment I logged on to meet her. <laughs> So I didn't capture all of that anguish on camera. I don't know. I still felt like this was like a fun, like, 
uh, chaotic peek behind the curtain and like how I am like in my most authentic state of being. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in another video.